A year after the emergence of the pandemic, Kuwait is still experiencing partial lockdowns, travel bans, and mandatory institutional quarantining. Vaccines are becoming available, but have not yet reached a large percentage of the population. How has pandemic impacted Kuwait's economy and banks? When do you anticipate recovery to take place in earnest? Which sections of the economy will be permanently advantaged or damaged? Undoubtedly, uh, 2020 was uh, exceptional uh, by all means. It's, it's not like any other year for the whole world and for Kuwait as well. Uh, at all fronts, health-wise, economically, financially, uh, services, uh, all fronts were impacted by this uh, crisis. Uh, economically, we expect uh, a decline and contraction in the GDP, uh, both oil and non-oil sector. Third quarter data shows that uh, there will be a, a decline of around 11.5%, uh, which was slightly better than the second quarter contraction of 13.4% year on year. Um, and this was driven by, both by oil and non-oil sectors. The scale front was also facing uh, challenges by the hit in oil prices. We've seen a uh, uh, sharp decline in oil prices, which impacted uh, revenues. And given the heavy reliance on oil revenues for the fiscal front, uh, therefore, uh, the budget was uh, impacted negatively. Uh, also, production was cut and that led to overall uh, decline in oil, total oil revenues. Um, banking sector, uh, fortunately, uh, was resilient and sound enough to absorb the shock, even though we're not out of the wood yet. Nonetheless, our efforts with the banking sector over the past decade uh, I think, uh, have paid uh, off during this crisis. And the uh, banking sector, Kuwaiti banks specifically entered the crisis from a position of strength. Uh, and this was uh, published recently when we studied and analyzed the banking sector financials for the past year. It showed uh, uh, very healthy capital adequacy, very strong uh, asset quality, uh, good profitability, even though uh, the business environment and uh, operational environment was impacted negatively by the lockdowns, both full and partial. Nonetheless, Kuwaiti banking sector remained sound, as we said, and continued to perform its vital role in the uh, economy. So. Uh, we're not out of the, out of the wood yet, uh, but we expect the banking sector and financial stability to remain uh, sound and strong and healthy and hopefully uh, overcome this crisis uh, very soon. In its relatively short history, digital banking has been transformative. During the pandemic, digital banking reached new watersheds as people were forced to conduct personal and professional banking activities from phones, tablets, and computers. What has been the experience in Kuwait? How have banks performed? And what are the challenges facing Kuwaiti digital banking? I think this is a very important and critical topic. And uh, it's, it's an equation that uh, has to balance. On one side, you want advanced, top quality, convenient, fast services. On the other side, you want safe, and secure services. Uh, we encourage our banking community and financial sector to provide such products and services that combine these two categories or values, safety from one side and convenience and high quality on the other side. I think we should take our efforts to a new level. Uh, previously, technology was a, a mere support function. This is not anymore the case. It, be, it became at the heart of everything. And I think we should take uh, our 
products and services to a new digital level. What's because it's not uh, only uh, automation of things or uh, electronic payments or uh, 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 simple automation of services. I think it's much more than that. Uh, and the banking community, given their uh, human uh, capital and technology and IT infrastructure, I think they have the capacity to contribute to the society, to their own uh, resources, as well as the fintech community in Kuwait and the SMEs and the digital companies, the small companies that are trying to provide the innovative products and services to the community. Therefore, we are collaborating and encouraging strongly our banking sector to play a vital role in supporting those companies. We are providing also a supportive environment uh, uh, in our regulatory sandbox, where we provide a safe testing environment in order to ensure whatever service provided to the community is, as I said, top quality, adequate, as well as safe at the same time. So, what investment is required in the future in this area? From us at our level, at the regulator level, at the banking community as well, and the, the private sector. In the GCC and Kuwait, the pandemic has been a grand disruptor. Disruption often leads to consolidation within sectors, perhaps at the country and regional level. Do you see societal support for consolidation of the Kuwaiti and GCC banking sector? Uh, Governor, would you like to comment on this? Well, I'm not sure if this is a matter of societal support, rather a business decision. Uh, indeed, uh, such a decision or society, that we take the society side, what they care about is, as I said, that they receive top quality, fast, convenient, cheap, safe services. If consolidation will lead to that, I think that's what society uh, cares about. But if we take the business side, the holders, the regulators, uh, uh, there it's more of a technical uh, decision. Uh, if it will lead, if that consolidation will lead to such a, a new institution, a new synergies, qualities, uh, resources, both. Uh, human and IT, uh, I think in that case, the decision is to support such a consolidation. Uh, so we have to think uh, very uh, clearly and thoroughly about such decisions. If we lead to such a new product, a new entity that can provide better services to the community, I think in that situation, a consolidation is warranted. And um, from our perspective as a regulator, given that we're not out of the woods yet, as I said, I think it is uh, very critical that we uh, think very deeply about the situation, uh, evaluate pros and cons, uh, and ensure that we understand both the acquirer and the acquired companies in order to decide whether, as I said, the bottom line that the new entity can survive the crisis, better the community, ensure financial stability, uh, lead to uh, high quality uh, services, and of course, uh, further strengthen the competition rather than reducing the competition in the banking sector. So uh, bottom line is, is the community, is the society, is the human being that we provide service uh, to. If we can, provide better services by the new entity, then this is a good decision. If that new entity will lead to poor services or will disrupt the financial stability or lead to any instability at the financial or monetary uh, side, I think uh, that decision is, is not warranted and must be thought uh, carefully. Around the world, environmental, social, and governance considerations have taken on new prominence during the pandemic. What has happened in Kuwait? Uh, Governor, do you want to comment on uh, ESG? 
Well, uh, this is also a very important topic. Uh, if we look our, at our economy, given the heavy reliance on, on oil, so this is also a critical subject that the uh, banking sector, and the financial sector is uh, very uh, strongly connected to the oil sector and the oil companies. And uh, climate change and the future of the oil industry is affecting that uh, relationship. And we're uh, discussing uh, this subject and preparing the financial sector and the banking community for the future. Because uh, I think we have to be ready from uh, physical risks and transitional risks, financial risks, all types of risks that might emanate from uh, what's happening in the world regarding the climate change. Um, uh, governance is also very critical. The pandemic further strengthened the importance of having proper governance at all types of institutions. Uh, banking sector is, is no exception. In fact, it should lead uh, the private sector in terms of uh, proper uh, governance. And therefore, we uh, continuously ensure that uh, our banking community is well managed, uh, proper governance is well established and institutionalized uh, at all levels. Uh, recently, we introduced in independent uh, board members uh, as part of the board of directors uh, on a gradual manner that will reach up to four members uh, in, in 2022. Um, uh, of course, uh, gender quality, income quality, uh, all these things uh, come into play and of utmost uh, importance. We at the Central Bank uh, of Kuwait were very proud that uh, the female community represent uh, a higher percentage, in fact, than male community. We are at the 58% uh, ladies uh, that represent uh, our staff. Uh, at all levels, including managerial uh, and executive level. So uh, those elements are very critical and important, and the regulator in the Central Bank of Kuwait uh, are keen of achieving those uh, objectives, uh, of course, in the cooperation with the sector. It's been suggested Kuwait needs a comprehensive development plan to diversify its con economy and spur job growth. Do you agree? If so, what should such a plan include? Many believe Kuwaiti economic and demographic factors require robust private sector job growth. This will probably have to come from SMEs. How will these organizations be financed to power this growth? Governor? Well, every, I think, country in the world need uh, uh, an advanced, uh, adaptive, uh, dynamic development plan that takes into consideration the future challenges and risks and change with what's happening worldwide. And the Kuwait is no exception. In fact, we need indeed a very comprehensive plan that reform all the structural imbalances and remedy all the difficulties and challenges our economies economy faces. Uh, whether in the economic, fiscal, labor, structural, uh, because uh, even though we achieved the monetary stability, financial stabilities, which are necessary, but not sufficient for uh, economic sustainability, and uh, both monetary stability or financial stability definitely will be impacted if we don't uh, take the necessary uh, serious steps to reform and remedy our structural imbalances. So we need a comprehensive development plan that uh, diversify our economy away from oil, that create jobs for nationals. Uh, uh, we have to continue to spend on uh, capital uh, investments uh, in order to attract both local and foreign investors create a healthy, attractive uh, business environment. Uh, 
all that must be taken into consideration in order to enhance our uh, fiscal position, our economic sustainability, to ensure prosperity for everyone in the society, not only now, but also in the future, in the future and ensure that future generations also we enjoyed in the past. So it's very critical that uh, uh, we have uh, such a comprehensive uh, development plan.